Hey Ruganath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Coast Stupidas. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to today's study of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Discussion. 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 Study. We study it. Yeah, study it. Some, I of, think study it. some people, of the Zoomers are there just taking notes. Yeah, that's, that's fair. studying. But that's I think type of study. No question. No question. You, uh, you got your touch-up appearance thing going on in Zoom. That is the equivalent of plastic surgery. Come yeah. on. I don't think I get do. rid of that. Let we love your face with all its wrinkles. Wrinkles are we have ours on too. Oh, we do? <laughs> but I don't think I actually do. We? do. Oh, no, I have absolutely I like, I'm zero. looking pretty good. Because you better follow my lead. <laughs> I have zero touch up my appearance. Oh hold. wait a second. Um, we're here live with uh uh Miss Mara spinning the dials. We got a live live crew of uh young Tommy Fawcett, Yoga Maya from San Francisco, and Miss Mallory. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. All righty. Let's get serious here, Raghu. Let's, Let's get serious, serious. <laughs> Let's get serious. I guess that was a futile attempt. <laughs> okay. Mara, do you have any wonderful announcements? I do. We have a asana class today with Radha Dasi at 10 a.m. for our Patreon members. And back to recovery group meetings. The men meet at noon today and the women meet at 2 p.m. Eastern. All right. Hello. Hello. Oh, I want to do a special Harry Krishna. Vegan trucker's good friend died, left his body. Oh. We're going to do a whole hands in the air Harry Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari, 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 Rama, Hari, Rama, 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 Hari, Hari. He is a special love and prayers going out to him, vegan trucker. Um, he was like a young guy and had a heart attack. You know, people, we were just talking about somebody else who just had a heart attack. At, at a, at a reasonably young age, and uh, it happens. Sometimes people have undetected um, heart issues, right? You know, and actually, the person that the nugget who we get the nugget from today uh, was just such a person. That's how he passed away. He had a heart attack. Yeah, and he had some. You know, it was after when the autopsy they discovered. Oh, he had this. You know, from birth, some kind of heart issue. Oh, really? Yeah, but it can go undetected. You know. Huh. Yeah, and just like that, everything changes. All your worries are gone. Wait a second. You know, it's just like that. We like, I've got things to worry about, or I've got a plan. There's one plan. Make the main thing the main thing. That's the main okay. thing, right? That's the yeah. main thing. Keep the yeah. main thing the main thing. Keep keep your daily practice. You know, the Native Americans used to say, "Today is a good day." I don't know if all of them said this. <laughs> Some of them. Hey, At least one of them said. We'll say. Maybe. How did you know they said that? Did they all say that? Like they walked around, they were chanting this on beads. But anyway, one particular Native American said this. Today is a good day to die. Today is a good day to die. Meaning I'm going to live every day as if it's my last day. And for in Krishna Bhakti, we do our worship. We have our meditation, the way we treat ourselves, the way we treat other people, what we consume. This is all making it. If, if, and if Krishna wants to take me today, we want to. We have to be ready to go and just Krishna. All right. 
Yasser Martin Andel says Black, Black Elk, Elk speaks. speaks. Yeah, Black Elk. Is We've he had him. saying that? Or are we saying, is he that true? Or are you just picking a random Native American? I would imagine he knows what he's talking about. He's not just maybe, maybe. a random he, yes, Native okay. American. Black Elk. Black Elk Speaks. We've read from that. We've got some good quotes. It's such a better name than Ray. Black Black Elk. Elk. Yeah, that's a cool name. We can call you Black Elk if you want, but it's already taken. That's taken. I'll come up with something else for you. Um, How about Running Mouth? (laughs) (laughs) Lavender. (laughs) Um, Eye Pillow. Call me Lavender Eye Pillow. (laughs) Okay. All right. Let's get into this. Here is our quote today it's a, it's a quote it, it, it's a nugget we call it a nugget if you're new to the show we have a little nugget from some some piece of wisdom and we tie it in with our with our show today so today's nugget is from joe strummer who's joe you, strummer huh who's joe strummer is the, the singer songwriter of the clash that's right very influential band in me and uh costuba's life and probably yeah. some of yours um i remember the first clash record i got sort of changed me i i would um, say this Roganath. If you go you back say? to me when I was 13, 14, 15 years old. Um, I wasn't even listening to music at 13. All right. We're not talking about you right now. We're, not, we're talking about me. Okay. <laughs> 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 I know. We'll get back to you. We're going to put the spotlight on you. It's just not it. all about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you go back to me when I was 13, 14, 15 years old, if there was one human being, you know, on this planet that was pulling my awareness to its next level of evolution, you know, it wasn't a mentor in my life. It wasn't a family member. It wasn't a teacher. It wasn't, you know, it was Joe Strummer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And yeah. this, I don't know when he said this. We're going to, we're going to have to read you something. But if you Google any part of this, you can find a clip online where he's saying this. And when he's saying it, he's saying it like he's crying when he's, you can hear he's crying. Oh, really? You know, he's saying it with, with, with um, such emotion. passion, you know. Um, did you ever see them? The I did see The Clash, yes. Where? At the pier? I saw The Clash at Pier 84. I think it was called Pier 84. There used yeah. to be a, uh, on the West Side Highway, there used to be a, a pier that yeah. bands would play at. Yeah. Okay, you saw them there. I, I was about to see them on that last tour with uh, The Who. I had oh, at the Shea Stadium. Yeah, that was... It was just like a, I didn't go. Okay, let's hear what he says. Okay, here he says. And so now I'd like to say people can change anything they want to. And that means everything in the world. People are running about following their little tracks. I am one of them. But we've all got to stop just following our little mouse trail. People can do anything. This is something that I'm beginning to learn. People are out there doing bad things to each other. That's because they've been dehumanized. It's time to take the humanity back into the center of the center of the ring and follow that for a time. Greed. It ain't going anywhere. They should have that in big billboard across Times Square. Without people, you're nothing. That's my spiel. Comments, Rogo? What do I think? You go first. I, th- I think it's uh, I think it's uh, he's talking like wisdom of the sages here. He's talking. And when I say that, I don't mean like me, per se. I mean, like the wisdom of the sages. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think they, they have some like. Deep inkling into a spiritual existence, how the the age old contaminants of the soul, lust, greed, anger, envy. They they pull us away from being authentic and living a. A, a genuine, purposeful life. And they take us into some type of sick narcissism, which everybody suffers um, from. Mm. So what do I think? I think like he's like hitting the nail on the head. And uh, I, th- these are attractive statements. And I just feel like with Bhakti, it's formatted in a, in a way where you can actually adopt this into your lifestyle. There's actually... There's actually things to do to actually give you that desired result. Yeah. You know? yeah like he's, he's using the word dehumanized, right? Dehumanized. Yeah. Yeah. We, we yeah. Could, that's a great word. We, yeah. We, we could look at ourselves and say, am I dehumanized? Right. Right. 
how my and you know he's Joe Strummer was a vegetarian. You know, oh, really? it's yeah. yeah. There's a story when he was like, he's there, there was some singer I forget his name Arthur Brown I think it was, and he had yeah. the song called Fire. You know that song? Nope. Really bizarre song, right? And he would have some kind of crazy stage act where he had like fire, and he, and Joe Strummer saw him and he saw like accidentally a rooster got lit on fire on stage. I, I, it was what kind of show was this? I, it was a bizarre. It was a really bizarre song. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> accidentally, it's, like the the regular. You know, the roosters at the show. You know, generally don't jump in the fire, but in this particular one, they. What kind of? What was this? Like a farm show? No, I think it, it was. It, the song is. It almost sounds like some kind of crazy demonic kind of thing. It, it was probably some kind of bizarre ritualistic kind of thing going on on stage or something. I'm not sure. Maybe it was a music video. But he okay. saw this rooster get incinerated live it's horrible it's horrible from that day he became a vegetarian you know because he because a dehumanized person and we say human you know it doesn't mean just caring for it means being humane which means having compassion you know never thought about that being humane okay yeah, yeah. and so this being dehumanized right he's saying we're all becoming dehumanized he saw that he could understand that there's a soul in that thing. It's suffering just like I suffer. Mm. You know, There's something uh, paradigm shifting when you actually start to see spirit in other people, in other races, mm. in other genders, in other um, uh, political parties, <laughs> right? Yes. And in other species. That's the big one. It's like, oh, wait a second. And then nothing's the same any longer. Yeah. Nothing's the same. And it, 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 it does some. And, and, and I feel really sad for when people would see something like that, like whatever, a rooster lighting up in flames. And they're like, oh, that was cool. Cool. I feel really sad because it's like. They're cut yeah. off almost from God uh, in, yeah. in a sense. They're not seeing they're not seeing that uh, spark of life in another being. And I, it's humiliating to say that that was me. That was me growing up as a child. I didn't put two and two together like this is a being. And, uh, you know, I was a fisherman and almost a hunter. I was almost a hunter. You say you're a fisherman. It sounds like you're out on a boat. I like, was. For months at a time. I was out on a boat <laughs> fishing. All right. Just a kid fishing. I mean, you fished. That doesn't but make I did you a it fisher a lot. man. I was okay. in it, a fisher really? boy. You were in I was a deep. fisher boy. I mean, I did have a paradigm shift at like 17 or 18. Um, but, uh, but it was like, I remember, you know, being torturous yeah, and like not getting it, not getting the idea that, uh, th this is me suffering. In the right. World. And, and Joe Trump are saying that, right? He's saying, I am one of them, right? He's saying people are running around following their little tracks. I am one of them. You, you know, to me, it, it's like, he's just a step away from Krishna consciousness here. Right. It, it's, it's like, yeah. He, he's saying, you know, like we're following, what are our little tracks? We follow the dictation of our mind and senses, right? Which are full of fear, mm. which make us think that we have to desperately um, fight for the resources to be happy. When we don't understand that we can be happy in, in the simplest of ways, right? And, and so therefore there's all this conflict and we become dehumanized, right? We hurt when people are, he's saying, People are, it's, it's a very simple statement in one sense, but you know, people are out there doing bad things to each other, right? Mm -hmm. Because we become dehumanized. He's seeing that, he, so he says, we should take humanity back to the center of the ring. Mm -hmm. To me, in a sense, that's what Prabhupada is doing. Let's take spiritual knowledge and put it back in the center, right? Mm -hmm. Let's bring up, let's, let's keep talking about this. Let's keep talking about how we're not our bodies, how we're not our minds, how we are the soul within. Let's let's keep talking about how we can be satisfied living simply and being kind to one another. You know, it's from that platform that we actually find a shared happiness collectively, but actually are able to experience something deeper spiritually, get to the meaning of all life. And greed is going nowhere. Right. And so he's saying that's what we should put on a billboard in Times Square. It's like our society doesn't, ha we don't, we do not have the proper values. We do not have the proper vision. Let's, Let's put try some to of our takeaways on billboards, huh? 
<laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Serious. But, but you know, like you hear a song like London Calling, you know, which was, I suppose, their most famous song. His most famous song. Well, I don't know if it was their most famous. I mean, maybe it didn't get the maybe highest on the US charts. Yeah. Rock the Casbah. Maybe, maybe that. I don't know maybe. what that song's about. Uh, well, th- let's stick with one song. Okay. <laughs> you take a song like London Calling, what it, you know, it's about society falling apart. You know, like everything's crumbling. Like we've been Is that living. What it about? Yeah. I didn't like, even know. Yeah, it's like we've been living these selfish lifestyles and they're leading us to doing harm to one another. And in the end, it's all going to crumble, you know. And and so th- th- to me, you know, it, this is just one. It's just a step away. It's, it's hardly like um, it, it, it's hardly a step away from you just throw Krishna right in front of that. You just throw you just throw the spiritual knowledge coming from Bhagavad Gita. Add it to this and click. You've really got something strong and powerful. You know, you really got something that that can create, like, um, again, both individual change and social change. But he was, re- you know, he was, there was something in him that was moving, that was observant enough and that was f- feeling enough to want to rebel against this, you know, to say, we got to stop the wheels, you know, we got to turn this train around, you know. I respect him for that. Yeah, me too. I, I think, well, like when you're sitting in the pool of chaos, it's just like I see it. And I think a lot of times that's what punk rock was. It was just seeing this is wrong. Yeah. This is wrong. Everything is wrong. <laughs> yeah, right. The you real question have is all like, the answers. how to get out of that wrongness. Like, what yeah. can I do to get out of it? Can I tell you a dad win the other day? OK, let's hear okay, it. You know, getting a kid out. Every parent knows this, like getting a kid out of the house to go to school is one of the most exhausting you know, things where parents just like break down. So I'm in the car, I'm driving my nine year old to school and I'm just like honking, get in the car, get in the car. So rolling down the window, like he's everything's packed, his stuff and he's trying to walk out the door. And then he's just like kneeling down on the driveway. It's like, what the hell are you doing? I was like, get in the car. I'm rolling down. Get in the car. I don't know what you're doing. Get in. And it had just rained a lot. And so there was little tiny worms all over the Mm. driveway. And he's picking up these worms on the driveway. And he goes, <laughs> this is terrible, Dad. This is terrible. And he's showing me how, like, these guys are all about to die, you know, because of, you know, because they're, they're, they're trying to, the worms are desperately trying they to get find back to peace. the earth. Uh, yeah, they're not near the earth. They're not going to get back. They're going to dry out in the sun. And he's like, he's sort of crushed in it. And it like really opened the, and just first of all, his heart was going out to a worm. I never had that. <laughs> I never had that. My heart never went out to worms. And um, our hearts and, had to go out to the worms. Was, yeah. And, and it opened up this whole conversation about a positive and negative and transcendental. Our whole conversation was, was about how the material world is miserable. If we're materialists, so I got to explain what a materialist is, what positive and negative means. You know, the ca- cup half you were full, ready. cup half empty. You were we ready. opened up a whole conversation to uh, look at that. Uh, the temporary, we own nothing. We got into like we own absolutely nothing in this world. It was a very mm. good conversation. That's beautiful, Robert. But so you you were that? ready to you were ready to take to to take his consciousness to the next stage of evolution. Sounds like he was taking your consciousness to the next stage of evolution a bit too. Yeah. And what did he say the night before? Oh, he's like, I would like you to explain word for word the, the Nishringadev prayers to me. Everything's shifting in the world of Tarun. This is like when, yes, Lord, Ch- yeah. when, when Lord Chaitanya came back from Gaia. It was like he was one person and then he became, suddenly he was like this evolved being. I know. That's, um, yeah, unfortunately, I was like, I'll tell you tomorrow. I'm just going to bed. Okay. But that's right. a nice thing to get your son to ask before you go to bed is tell me the word for word lyrics to the Nishringa Day prayers. You know, we're going to one last thing about Joe Strummer. Yes. His father was like some kind of British diplomat. Really? Like, you know, he was always on different posts in different countries. He lived in India. He lived in Turkey. He, you know, he, he, he was he was raised like all around the world. You know, he's he's going to all these different places. But then he got sent to like one of these boarding schools. Yeah. And these boarding schools, you know, particularly like these British boarding schools, yeah. they they can be very dehumanizing. You know, right. it's like they they 
try to discipline you by just destroying you, you know, like just, destroy, you know, just like speaking to you in the harshest ways, just trying, you know. So there's some people I know that went to these, If you put it on the board if you're one of these people out there. But yeah, I've heard that this report from a bunch of boarding people who had that experience. Yeah, they, they really talk down to you. They really try to embarrass you. They try to humiliate you, you know, into it's following. Growth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> into growth. And then into like, growth. <laughs> yeah, they're humiliating you into growth. <laughs> you're right. going to shame your way up and, the and, educational and, ladder. And Joe Strummer's brother committed suicide. And he and he he always believed it was because of the way that he was being treated in those schools, you know. So I think that propelled him into trying to understand something about the human condition, you know. Um, so, you know something deeper about it, and, and trying to trying to see the value, the necessity of compassion, you know. And I think that came out in his music, and uh, out of that whole punk rock thing, which was just such a a crazy blend of all different kind of ideas with a certain kind of like mood of defiance that tied them all together you know exactly but, but um but he had something brighter and it lasted you know and, and it it um where most of those bands kind of just burnt out pretty quick you know he had something deeper to share i think he as a musician you could see he he evolved in ways that most of those musicians didn't. And, uh, but, you know, again, more important, I think he had, a, he had this message. Again, if you, if you Google Joe Strummer and without people, you're nothing, you'll find this like clip. It's like a 30 second clip or something like that. And he's saying this and it's, you hear him crying when he's saying it. It's, it's actually really touching. Hmm. I love when Kosuba gets all sentimental. That's <laughs> what are you talking about. <laughs> Omnimo Bhagavate Vas wait a second. Narayan Am Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tatoja Yam Mudirayat. Before we start in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Prayeshva Badreshu Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya. Bhagavati Uttama Shloki, Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki, by regular attendance in classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees. All that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated, and loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs, will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Kyananjana Shalakya Chaksurun Medatam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with a torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. All right. Read, reading from the Shema Bhagavatam, Canto 5, text uh, chapter 12, text 13. Yeah, just a few verses left in this uh, chapter now. Mm -hmm. Laying it down, Maharaj. He's laying it down. And what did he just tell us in this last verse? He, uh, took, he took it to the next level, right? Not just detachment from the things of this world, not just observing how we are not the body, we are not the mind, we are moving through temporary forms that are given certain names, but we're beyond that, we transcend that, that's just a blip in time. That All that's jnana. Hmm. But then he took it to the level of bhakti, right? He says you, you only get the, he says, the deepest realizations on this are realizing the absolute truth who manifest as Brahman, as Paramatma, and ultimately as Bhagavan, as a person, and then he revealed, well, how do you get to know that person? How do you get to understand the absolute truth? And he said, he said, ultimately, it's it's done by the mercy of a great devotee. It's through the associate. It's from one. It's a heart to heart transfer, right? Heart to heart transfer. That's why this well, all that Joe Strummer is saying is so important because you don't receive unless your heart is set right. You know, hmm. you don't you you don't until you try are striving to be compassionate until you are striving to respect all life. That heart to heart transfer, it's like one side is potent, but Prabhupada used to say like that, right? When he was describing a guru disciple relationship, he would say, like, if a man is potent and a woman is fertile, then they can have a child, right? Mm -hmm. A child can be produced. So, similarly, like if the guru is potent and if the disciple is fertile, if the guru is a, is a genuine representative of this spiritual knowledge, and if the disciple is receptive to that knowledge, then it takes birth, right? Mm. Otherwise, you can have uh, the most potent guru. Yeah. People are just not interested. 
Yeah. They're not interested. Oh. They're not interested in disciplining themselves. You have to discipline yourself to find truth. You have to decide, you know what? My trying to understand the absolute truth is more important than my addiction to this that never serves me right. or my attachment to this thing in the material world that doesn't serve me. My ego, uh, my, my pride. ego habits that uh, I do on a re regular basis. Yeah, even we've seen, Raghunath, right, where there is a guru that's like really special, deeply realized, speaking truth. But sometimes their followers just may, um, they may be approaching out of pride, right? Sure. They may, they may be thinking, well, my guru is the best and nobody else gets it. And then they're just putting everybody else down. And, and it's like they're actually not making any traction because they're not receptive. So I, I like the statement that, um, you know, because you see sometimes people get a lot of mercy, so to speak. They get a lot of association with great souls. Yeah. And they say, um, you know, it seems like this person should be very evolved. He has so much They're time. They're so close. These great masters. Yeah. And they say, well, a fly can also land on the shoulder of a king. You know, so it doesn't mean the fly is going to become evolved. It's just looking it's, for food. It's actually, yeah, it's, 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 um, it's within the pr presence of it's right there. It's even touching, but it's, it's just a disturbance. <laughs> it's not no, like this. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so uh, that's where, so that's sort of where it goes to. If we, we get that chance to associate with great souls, let's make that a special meeting. This is a, like sort of like a wake up call for us. If we get that association with great souls, let's treat them like they're great souls. Hmm. Let's appreciate them while we're here and let's try to render service and get try to get within their heart. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful. If you get in the heart of a great soul, they're thinking, ah, how are they doing? If a great soul is thinking, how is Mara doing? How is Mallory doing? How is Yoga Maya doing? Like that. That's what we want. We want to get in the heart of great souls. Um, because it's by their desire. It, it, they become because great souls are dear to Krishna. Their, Krishna becomes very dear to them and therefore. Krishna wants to please the, we were saying yesterday, right? Now Krishna really wants to serve the devotees. Mm. Krishna takes extra care of the devotees who, and he wants to serve them. So if they're wishing you well, you're going to do very, very well. Okay. So, so, so that having said that, having, having dropped this, this again, we were talking about it yesterday, but this message is the message that you're not finding so much there in the Vedas and the Upanishads, you know, but it's, but Vyasadeva, the author, is framing it for us through this story, this conclusive message here. Hey, how, how do you receive this highest spiritual insight, benediction, realization? You receive it by the mercy of a great devotee. Well, then the next question is, well, who are they? How do I find them? What do they look like? What do they do? How do I recognize that this is one of those people? Text 13. Who are the pure devotees mentioned here? In an assembly of pure devotees, there's no question of discussing material subjects like politics and sociology. Mm. Ooh, that's the first clue. You have. Interesting. So okay. Put that on our T-shirt. In an assembly of pure devotees, there is discussion only of the qualities, forms, and pastimes of the supreme personality of Godhead. Put that on a shirt. <laughs> okay. He praised put on a and billboard. worshipped. He is praised and worshipped with full attention. I don't, don't put that on the shirt. It won't make sense. <laughs> okay. um, in the association of pure devotees, by constantly but the, hearing... the point here was full attention. This is this is you know this is Bhagavad Gita, right? Where you're he's praising worship with full attention yes. to become fully absorbed in. Right. In the association of pure devotees, by constantly hearing such topics respectfully, right? Not hearing receptive. them respectfully. Yeah. Even a person who wants to merge into the existence of the absolute truth abandons this idea mm -hmm. and gradually becomes attached to the oh. service of Vasudev. Raghunath, Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? That key word, respectfully, that's when everything sh shifts in people's life. Very important, yeah. It, and, you know, I didn't even do this intentionally, but if you actually look at that last sentence, let's look at this again and think about this, Raghunath, okay? Yeah. In the association of the pure devotees, by constantly hearing such topics respectfully, even a person who wants to merge into the existence of the absolute truth. So, so that means even a person who has no interest in the person, the Bhagavan, they just want to be free of their suffering and merge into the oneness and, 
and lose touch with all the suffering of this world. Even that person, because if they're like that, it's likely because they have some aversion to the idea of God as a person. I'm not interested in that. I just want to become free of the sufferings of this world. I'm sick of it all. Yeah, right? sick of it all. Um, even a person who wants to merge into the existence of the absolute truth abandons this idea and gradually becomes attached to the service of Vasudev. So it's saying only by the association of a person do they abandon this idea of merging and losing their own personality. It's what Joe Strummer is saying. Without people, you're nothing. Look at that. Now Joe Strummer's thinking of the like the you, you merge into the nothingness, right? But, yeah. but but I think there is a connection here because he, here's the idea. Again, Vyasadev, he gave us a lot of text that would encourage someone to leave the world behind, become free of your material suffering, seek moksha, seek freedom by merging into the oneness. But here in these texts, he's, he has a special mission to say, that wasn't my final teaching. That was one step forward on a path. But you can go further, but you do not get to that highest realization where you realize divine love, right? As the, as the complete satisfaction of the self. He says, you only get there through the grace of another person that's got it in their heart and you receive that heart to heart transfer, right? That heart to heart connection. Only that way do you get it. You know, I was hearing topics of Krishna, yeah. of the Bhagavad Gita, of Vedic thought, of Sanatan Dharma. Were you? Unrespectfully. Not respectfully. Oh, okay. Like, sort of like, eh, what is this? Like, like skeptically. Riddled with doubts and sarcasm and like, who are these guys? And mm -hmm. who do they think they are? I was hearing it. And then a shift happened. And I think the shift was just sort of like, my material plans weren't working out as as I expected, like I was thinking, like, I'm not, I don't have it so together. I don't have it together. Yeah. You know, you know who gets credit for this one? I'm looking at him right now. Chief Pags. He Chief listened Pags. respectfully. Chief Pags mm -hmm. came to Italy. He listened respectfully. And then uh, Sachinandana Swami, he came with to support his lovely wife, Lori Pag. And so, um, came to Italy on our retreat last year. On our retreat last year. And then, um, he, and, you know, he's, he's a cool guy. Chief Paz always dressed sort of cool. And then one day he shows up in a Corta. And in that Corta, I was like, you look really nice. He said, yeah, you know, like he has something like, like, you know, I'm not I'm not into this. But, you know, I just out of respect for the Swami, such an the Swami is going to get class tonight. Out of respect to the Swami, I'm wearing it. I was like, you're in. That's it. It's over. Respectful. Your material life is over, Mr. Pag. <laughs> it's over. And that's what happens. You listen with respect, and that's mm. all you need. Then, then you get blessings just get showered upon you. Mm. And it, it's a lot because a lot of us are living in that ego. Like I got my act together. I got it all down. You got you. What do you guys know? And for people who don't have, and some people don't have that. I I have that. It's gross and ugly. But a lot of people don't have that. And when they hear the Bhagavatam, you meet these people. They heard, you know, like me and Sachi Sutta Prabhu, like. It took me like three years, of like hearing and having a lot of um, critical minds. And then Sachi Sutta, my last Youth of Today tour when I was 22 years old, he just came on tour and he just didn't have that in his heart. And he became a devotee like practically instantly. Mm. It, it was like just from hearing from a great soul. He, we met Dravida Prabhu and he's like, yeah, I'm totally into this. Mm. And I was like, what? You <laughs> well, slow down like, there, guy. Like, slow it down, kid. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> 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 uh, now, now let's take a look at this commentary a bit here, Raghunath. You want to read a little? Yeah. Uh, commentary in text 13. The symptoms of a pure devotees are described in this verse. The, the, the pure devotee is never interested in material topics. Uh, that's boom. Okay. That's it. People. This is a big, huge clue right Zip here. Zip it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. kind of person you're looking for okay you know how to get rid of somebody who's bothering you with the tons of nonsense start talking spiritual yeah, you look at them in the eye and say oh i'm glad you're here what do you say we read the bhagavad gita together mm. it'll be like uh i gotta go they'll make up an excuse <laughs> okay. i gotta go because they're averse <laughs> to hearing transcendental sound mm. um sri chaitanya mahaprabhu was strictly has strictly prohibited his devotees to talk about worldly matters Gramya Varta Na Kahibe. 
one should not indulge in talking unnecessarily about news of the material world. And now, why? Yeah. This is me. This isn't the purport. This okay. is just me talking about. <laughs> yes, why? Right? Why? It's always in flux. It's always in flux. One minute you're on the top of the world and when everything's upside down. You can't distinguish reality from truth anymore. Mm. You get dehumanized. We become dehumanized. We become desperate. Yeah. You, you know, do you know where that, that phrase that he quoted here, Gramya Varta Na Kahibe? Is it a that? song? No. I don't know. It's a, from the Chaitanya that's, Charge. Marita, that's Chaitanya that's Charge. That's Bengali. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's that's that is from. This is something you should commit to memory, Raghunath. And I know that I'm not supposed to push you to do that, <laughs> but this is something. Well, it's okay. I've got a bunch of things I want you to do too. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, I'm ready to hear them as long as. <laughs> but these were the teachings of Sri Chaitanya to Raghunath Das Goswami, uh -huh. who of whom you are the namesake. Yes, I'm the namesake. I think I got that right. <laughs> so too. If not, so, you made a great offense. So, so there, there's a, um, a great passage from the Chaitanya Charitamrita where Raghunath Das Goswami was like this young renunciate, right? Yeah, young well, first of all, he was a, a young billionaire son. Yeah. You yeah. know, he grew up with everything. Everything. And he but just was like, he I'm walked sick away from of it, it all. I'm sick of it all. I'm not interested. Yeah. I'm sick but, of it all except for Sri Krishna and the devotees. Right. And so he left home in Bengal, went to Orissa to, to uh, Jagannath Puri, where he surrendered his life to Sri Chaitanya. Sri Chaitanya put him under the care of a great Vaishnava. Right. Who is that? You know? Rupa Goswami. No. No, Sanatana Goswami. No. Swarup Damodar Goswami. Okay, you're the namesake. That's, that's okay, upset. let's humiliate Raghunath. Yeah, I thought go. you would know that. Everybody get me. Okay. So, so um, he was so humble, Raghunath Das Goswami, so austere. Yeah. And he sent a message through through Swarup Damodar Goswami. Another, they were all renunciates. They were all monks, you could say, right? Sannyasis. He sent a message to Sri Chaitanya saying, this is what, this is what, um, it went like this. He said, Raghunath Das Goswami never even spoke a word before the Lord. The Lord. Hmm. He wasn't like, well, I'm important. I'm going to get right next to him like that fly. Right. He was very right. humble. He said, instead, he informed the Lord of his desires through Swarup Damodar Goswami and Govinda. Govinda was the servant of Sri Chaitanya. He said, the next day, Swarup Damodar Goswami submitted to Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said the following. So Sarup Damodar Goswami is speaking on his behalf. He says, Raghunath Das has this to say to your lotus feet. He's saying to Sri Chaitanya. He says, I do not know my duty or goal of my life. Therefore, please personally give me instructions from your transcendental mouth. Mm -hmm. right? Smiling, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Raghunath Das, I've appointed Sarup Damodar Goswami as your instructor. You may learn from him what is your duty is and how to discharge it. I do not know as much as he. Right? Okay, so then he says, um, nevertheless, if you want to take instructions from me with faith and love, you may ascertain your duties from the following words. So now I think it's three verses, even two verses. These are verses that were spoken to Raghunath Das Goswami as his instructions for life. Now, of course, these are specially spoken to a sannyasi, right? To a renunciate. But there's, these are so rich with information on how to live our life. Do not talk like people in general or hear what they, what they say. That's what, that, what Prabhupada quoted in that verse that we just read, okay, in that commentary. You with me? I'm with you. Okay. Do not talk like people in general or hear what they say. All of that nonsense talk that's just got us running on, on our little mouse trails, you know, that's confusing us. It's got us chasing our senses and so on. He also says, you should not eat very palatable food, nor should you dress very nicely. You're going to learn to, to find your happiness within, right? It's, it's not through any of these external things. Do not expect honor. 
but offer all respect to others. Mm. Right. As this little is, as that little as that those instructions sound, <laughs> life changing. Those are huge. Yeah. <laughs> those are huge. Yeah. Do not expect honor. Yeah. You know, our whole world is about how can I get validation? How can right. you appreciate me? How can you I know, be respected? I need to yeah. hear that you appreciate me. <laughs> I need to hear it right from you right now. Yeah. For us to uh, have a decent relationship, I need you to tell me about. Why and and so, so valid. and now look at how this works. In other words, the idea is from from one great soul from another, you receive this transmission of of devotion, right? You receive it from one heart to another. But to receive it, you need to be receptive. How are you going to be receptive? Don't talk all this ordinary nonsense and hear this ordinary nonsense from ordinary people who have no clue, right? Which is, and, and and learn to be satisfied very simply in how you eat and how you dress. Do not expect honor, but offer respect to everyone else. And from that point, you can get that heart-to-heart -heart transmission through. And then he says, always chant the holy name of Lord Krishna. Mm. And within your mind, render service to Radha and Krishna and Vrindavan. But then these deepest, esoteric, powerful spiritual principles will take root in your heart. They will be transferred into your heart. You will transform, but not unless you won't be receptive unless you're, you're cultivating what he had said earlier. Right? Mm -hmm. So important, yes. such important instructions, huh? Yeah, this is the practice. Th that, that's the practice to get there. Sometimes we just stop at the, you know, we stop there and we'll read some Instagram quote or we'll read some you know, some insightful author about, you know, we shouldn't criticize and we shouldn't, you know, um, worry about what people think about us. And we're like, yeah, that's how I can have a, a better life. And it's true. It gives you a better life. But these things are meant to bring us even somewhere higher. Yeah. And this is sort of uh, the bhakti path. You get all that good stuff anyway. You get a better life anyway. The, 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 the principles to get to the goal make just life rich and peaceful. You know, hmm. rich and peaceful. You know, a little further down. Well, why don't you just go ahead and keep reading a few more yeah. sentences? So this Ramya means like talk about the talk of village, like, the village talk, just the common. What's going on? What's gossiping. The what's the latest? What's yeah. the buzz? Yeah. A devotee has no other ambition than to serve Krishna, the supreme personality of Godhead. Oh, did you skip something? This, I thought it would be one should not waste time. One should not indulge in talking unnecessarily about the news of the material world. One should not waste time in this way. This is a very important feature in the life of a devotee. A devotee has no other ambition than to serve Krishna, the supreme personality of Godhead. Now, this is an interesting see statement. Even devotees get little, get, go off on these little tangents too, you know? People have been around, they've been in Krishna consciousness All for a the while, time. but they go off on a tangent. And that tangent takes them into the forest. And the next thing you know, that's all they talk <laughs> so, about. So, uh, some gonna, weird little thing. I'll, I'll, I'll tell with. you something. Sometimes, like, someone tries to friend me on Facebook. Yeah. Like a devotee. And do you accept it? Well, then I look at the, what they post. And sometimes I just see it's all of this worldly stuff. Right. You know, maybe in the form of conspiracy theories, maybe in the form of some other kind of, you know, it, it's like, you know, you see that. And I'm just like, you know what? not interested you know yeah. it's just I, I have no interest i have no interest in going into that world you know yeah so um, please continue yes this krishna consciousness movement was started to engage people 24 hours daily in the service of the lord and his glorification the students in this institution engage in the cultivation of krishna consciousness from five in the morning to 10 at night. This was the ashram life, right? So it was a different shift. <laughs> you went to bed earlier. earlier. <laughs> we went to bed earlier. We got up for, yeah, this right. right. This is a different period. And uh, <laughs> they actually have no opportunity to waste their time unnecessarily by discussing politics, sociology, and other current events. Now, this next <laughs> line, this is the, this next sentence. These will go these will go their own way interesting yeah yeah it's like they're just going to go their own way you're not going to do much about them is a that... devotee is concerned only with serving krishna positively and seriously yeah i think you know when uh we had uh, the spiritual scientists on the show on sunday Rana. yeah 
the, more or less the what did theme. I miss? What did I miss that well, day? The theme had a lot to do with this. In other words, the balance between, you see, Prabhupada says here, don't get involved in current events and what's going on in the world. These things will go their own way, right? Like, in other words, this material world is on a certain path. It's, it's a world of ups and downs, and that's the way it will always be designed that way. Right. And on the other hand, like you'll get statements from Prabhupada, like Prabhupada said that this Krishna consciousness movement will go down in history as having saved mankind at its darkest hour, <laughs> right? So he, he's giving us, in one sense, it's two different messages. It's like, and, there's a, and there is a, uh, you could say a balance between the two, or you could say there's an amalgamation between the two. Like, I won't get absorbed on the mundane surface level because I want to understand spiritual, I want to become deep spiritually, but with that spiritual depth, you actually can change the world, mm. right? Like, you know, and, and again, that's kind of what like Joe Shummer was saying, it's like, we can change things if we want to, right? P people can change this world if they want to, but the it's gotta be, it's gotta be, it's not gonna be through, it, if we don't change ourselves, it's never gonna happen. And that's the point, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna analyze how everything is wrong. We're gonna be depressed, and we're going to yeah. be angry and right. we're going to see everybody as separate in different tribes and we're just going to lash out and um That's that a... can't be the answer just to just to die hating right um yeah we work on ourselves and the fact is like hey even vegan trucker's friend just died like all of a sudden wasn't expecting it in his sleep young guy and that could happen to you and so it's it's sort of like this is the real change can i change myself before my personal time bomb goes off, right? We all have a yeah. personal time bomb that might happen before the world radically changes. Yeah, you know, I tell you, oh man, I tell you something right now. My personal time bomb. You know, we it, it, we talk about these things on the show, and I, you know, I remember a couple of weeks ago we were talking about this in depth, like you know, taking my the taking my spiritual understanding to the next level i don't want to be a guy that gets interested in bhakti lives on the surface of it and dies living on the surface of it you know yeah like you know and, and we're talking about that you know i can conform to the bhakti practices to i can conform to the bhakti faith i can conform to the bhakti practices on a surface level but it's not all the right catchphrases. Yeah, or just, you know, show up, you know, at the right, at certain, pro, you know, but there has to be a burning drive within one that I'm not reaching the stage that I need to reach. I'm, I, I need to go deeper. I, it's burning in me. I have to go there. That's, that's when the transformation takes place. You know, you have to become a little desperate, you know, and we, and we gave the example of in the book Siddhartha that talks about that we're, the book opens up where Siddhartha is sitting next to his friend Govinda and they're, they're coming out of their meditation practice and, and uh, Siddhartha says to Govinda, how do you think the meditation practice is going? How are you feeling? You know, oh, I think it's going great. You know, every day we're right. doing this and, you know, and uh, what do you think, Siddhartha? I don't think we're getting anywhere. You know, something's got to change. I have to go deeper. I need to. And I had, I had a crazy experience the other day, Ravna. Tell me. Crazy? Um, crazy. But it, 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 it illuminated this in my mind in, in a way, you know, that the need for it to burn in one. But, um, and it, you know, it plays into the whole quote that we're playing with today, the nugget and everything like that too. But, you know, I, I've lived in the, in the, uh, in the worst ghettos of New York, you know, in, 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 in when New York was the biggest mess that it's ever been, you know, mm -hmm. I've seen all kinds of things on the streets. I've seen all kinds of poverty. I've seen all kinds of suffering. I've, I've witnessed, you know, the blood and the gore and, the, and, and so much of it. And, and I can walk through it, um, in a sense, unchanged, you know, like I can walk through it in a, you know, like growing up, the it idea dehumanizes was, you. You, you could become dehumanized. Growing up, the idea Living was- Living in if, New York City that in those early 80s, it, you had to be a little unhuman. Thick not skin. Just to, not just to stop and break into tears. Right. And, and 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 actually, you take pride in that, right? That like you can be existing right in the midst of the, yeah. the, the, the craziest kinds of insanity and suffering and just be like, yeah, I, 
you know, like I can handle this. Like it, it doesn't move me. Right. Right. And so you spend years of your life cultivating that consciousness. <laughs> right. And then you get into bhakti. You kind of have to kind of turn it around. Get be- be- again. Be- because, um, you know, like what are the qualities of a devotee here? The first thing that that Jadabharda said is it's one that's not interested in hearing all this worldly talk. But as we go deeper into Bhagavatam, we're going to find part of it, important part of it is this paradukha dukhi, right? That that you feel the suffering of others. You're not you're no longer concerned with I'm suffering because of this. I'm suffering because of this. Why is in my situation? No, you lose. You totally let go of that because you have this internal satisfaction and contentment. But actually, what you, the pain that you begin to feel is the pain that other people feel, right? When you see someone else in pain, then you feel pain. That is the quality of a bhakti yogi. Mm. And so I was walking through part of New York the other day. It's part of New York. It's like a, it's part of New York that kind of still had, feels like the old New York, right? Where's that? Like if you just walk around like, it, like um, just like south of Times Square, Oh yeah, you know, like yeah. in in the lower forties and upper thirties, you know, around Seventh or Eighth Avenue. Yeah, it was, it was somewhere around there, where you still see a lot of that. A little grimy. It's really grimy, and 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 you know, you see some horrible, disgusting things. You know, really? tell me. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, but and but it's human suffering. You know, it, okay. it, it's in the form of human suffering. You know, um. And I was walking, th- and, and again, normally I can just walk past that, you know. It's not like I, I want to be callous to it, but the fact is you become callous to it. And I was walking through the other day, and I felt, and, and something happened inside me. It was almost like a panic attack, you know. It was, it was like I felt lightheaded, and I felt nauseous intensely. Like it rose up in me like intensely, you know. Almost where like I thought I, I need to go sit down, you know, it was like I was I was like lightheaded and, you know, I felt like I was going to throw up or I was going to faint. Hmm. And by the time I got to the end of the block, it just started to like kind of like ease. But then I thought about it and I thought, you know what, that paraduka dookie, I don't have it. Right. I, I don't. Ha- For a second, I almost got the feeling what it would be like to actually feel another person suffering deeply, right? To not be able to tolerate another person suffering. And I felt almost like Paramatma just gave me a flash of, hey, you callous fool, you know? I get it that you have to walk around and do the things you have to do, you know? But you don't, fe- you don't know what it's like to feel the suffering of another human being. You- you're not there. You don't have that depth of you don't have that depth of um, spiritual understanding and you better find it before you die. You know, you better work on that. You better become more, you better pray for it intensely. You know, what are you doing with your life? You know, I felt that, you know. So I think we, we have to, we have to be constantly as bhakti yogis, we have to be constantly looking for what is that next step of realization? How do I get, and you know what it is, Raghunath? I'm committed. You have to beg for it, you know? You have to, you know, Bhakti Tirtha Swami really characterized that, you know, being a Bhakti Yogi means becoming a beggar. You become a beggar yourself. You know, these realizations, they're given from another devotee. You beg for them, you know, that your heart becomes receptive to this, that you actually begin to feel the sentiments that a pure devotee feels, you know. Not just that you join an institution or you wear the right clothes or you, you know, that surface level stuff, it's, it's great, but it's just a start, you know. Thank you. Well, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Are we out of time? We're out of time, but right. I like it. I like what you said. Okay. Um, and I did notice that about my own life, just living in New York in the early '80s. It was like, yeah. wow. Got to you. Got to be like a stoic, uh, heartless, <laughs> just to survive. Just to yeah. survive, or else yeah, you'd be stopping every three feet. Like this is sad. That sad. Oh my yeah. god, that's dangerous. This is yeah. desperate. Okay, Miss Mara, bring the shine some light. Bring us, bring the sun into the room. I'm talking about <laughs> old New York now. I'm a little depressed. Can, can we make us a cheery uh, morning cup of gel here? Give us some information. I got some good takeaways for you. All right. Am I dehumanized? Am I? Am I? Crucifix dehumanization. Remember that record? Best, <laughs> best. I could tell you some crucifix stories, but. Put spiritual right. knowledge back in the center. There you go. There you go. The back of the new 
Wisdom of the Sages t-shirt. Huh. Greed is going nowhere. That's right. No. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Discipline yourself to find truth. Okay. Yep. Appreciate and render service to get in the hearts of great souls. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. Without people, you're nothing. You're nothing. Nothing. Politics and current events will go their own way. Yeah. Yeah. Keep the main thing the main thing. Can I change myself before my time bomb explodes? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? Yeah, before it explodes. There's a time bomb chained to our leg. We're not sure when it's going to go off. We're not sure. It's like set, and we don't know. Okay, madam. And? And? Let your heart go out to the worms. Oh, that's right. Let your heart go out to the worms. <laughs> Let's all meditate on worms. Let's do it. It's a miserable world, Tarun said. This is miserable. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks, all the Zoomers. You want to join us on Zoom? You can. Others out there. Join us on Zoom. It's fun. Email Mara, Wisdom of the Sages 108 at gmail.com. Check out our events page, Wisdom of the to check out what we got going on. We're in New York City for the Rapiatra. We're in Italy, a couple spaces left for that because we had last minute dropouts. And our Wisdom of the Sages retreat upstate. We're going to do one in the autumn, too. Um, let's do that. Up our sleeves. Uh, Patreon.com. You like what we're doing? Hey, you can support this podcast. It's community supported. That means we subsist, we exist by the support and the love of the community. So if you like what we're doing, patreon.com slash wisdom of sages. We make a monthly tithing or tithing? Tithing. <laughs> monthly tithing. <laughs> tithing. Give us your tithe. Hi, tithe us, please. At patreon.com. And not only do you just tithe us and we appreciate that, but you get an entrance into a treasure vault. The past classes, workshops, um, valuable yogic information huge on Patreon that we record. People who are members, including Dave Krishna. Mm.